I think uh, you know you really set the stage for discussing these field issues. Now I'll move to Ms. Goel, who is doing a great work to bridging uh, the, this gap between oncologists and uh, the you know patients. So the team of KWT, uh, who is working in uh, Tata Memorial Hospital and other uh, you know centres, um, it, it is it is really a great work which we perceive that uh, because of uh, lack of time. Uh, we are many a times not able to really explain the patients properly, uh, the problems, and many times we also feel that patients themselves are hesitant uh, whether this problem is really relevant to tell it to doctors, etc. So that part, your team is doing a phenomenal job. Uh, your experience in the field, uh, you know, Ms. Goel, uh, how you train these people to really deliver such an uh, such a you know great care. And which is so much needed, and all how, and also about the acceptance. So thank you, Dr. Bajpai, for inviting me on this very very luminous forum, and uh, thank you, Dr. Nair and Dr. Gauravi Mishra for sharing your thoughts. Uh, you know, I think that the hallmark of a progressive uh, of a uh, society which has evolved are progressive men and empowered women. So I think that is that is what are the pillars of society. Uh, in patient navigation, we deal with all strata of society. The few problems and the many, in fact, that we face is the fact that women might not be the economic uh, providers. They might not be holding the purse strings and then hence are not the decision makers. There is a lack of empowerment and a lack of education. There is a reluctance in dealing with things like which are very important, like body issues, like uh, sexual orientation. All these things are a part of survivorship, which is a very prominent part of the uh, of uh, of cancer treatment and cancer care. So when we are looking at women, we have to really look at all the aspects of her life and living. And that, unfortunately, we as uh, from the medical side, focus and concentrate upon the uh, upon the, the the treatment and the funds, et cetera, provisioning for the treatment. But a lot of issues go neglected or they are swept under the carpet. And so many women are reluctant to discuss this in forums. We do have support groups which are uh, which give them a platform for discussion. But I think that the, those things need to be dealt into more. And as far as uh, professionals are concerned, I think the COVID pandemic also brought to light a lot of issues uh, about gender-based disparity. And there was a uh, study, I think, which was published by our own center, by Dr. Sabita Jivnani, who highlighted that during the percentage, uh, in, during the pandemic, a larger percentage, almost 81% of women uh, medical workers uh, were responsible for increased domestic work in uh, uh, in uh, in comparison with men, which was only 65. And more women than men felt an adverse impact on their work and were forced to leave and quit their jobs. And multiple studies from the world also demonstrated the same. So I think that you know when these things are brought into light, these are of course uh, you know very. Uh, uh, un, uh, unreal circumstances and, and they're not uh, they're not very common but I think that over a period of time we have worked to come so far but I think some of the things that we may not be really looking at uh, as far as cancer treatment is concerned those should be also taken into consideration so thank you very much for uh, you know sharing these uh, very valuable insights uh, now I'll move on to mrs sonic uh, mrs sonic is with us uh, and uh, uh, she has again done a lot of work uh, as far as the workforce equality is concerned. So I would like to hear from you that um, when you did uh, your uh, study as far as the insurance, uh, you know, in scheme uh, and the gender division uh, is concerned, and you had uh, you had uh, written an excellent editorial also, which is uh, published in the current uh, Women for Oncology issue. Uh, which is uh, you know, released in this week uh, only. So I would like to hear uh, hear from you about your study and your thoughts as far as gender equality in this country and otherwise. Thank you so much, Dr. Jyoti. And um, I'm actually very privileged to be in the um, you know company of uh, so many distinguished speakers uh, tonight. And uh, I would like to begin by greeting all of you uh, on International Women's Day and uh, applaud and appreciate the work you're doing. 
so coming to the question you've asked me, um, uh, you know, this scheme of uh, providing um, health care insurance uh, by empaneling private hospitals had been started uh, during my tenure as pri principal health secretary of public health. And uh, I was very keen to study the data to look at insights into what is it that needs to be changed in this policy. As part of this uh, research project that I undertook, I found that those women who were suffering from cancer, different forms of cancer, mostly it is breast cancer and cervical cancer. So the reasons are uh, many fold. Uh, primarily it is lack of hygiene and access to decent toilets. That is the first thing. Uh, and the second is uh, also lack of privacy, uh, you know, within the uh, home environment as well, where they are not able to understand if there are any changes in the breasts that they should go and get themselves checked. Those women who actually approached the hospitals for treatment, uh, we found that uh, A, they dropped out of, uh, uh, you know, the treatment protocols very early. They did not complete the entire uh, cycle. Uh, and they, um, uh, you know, uh, there was higher mortality because of that, which is very worrisome. And um, uh, the other thing that we found was that uh, uh, the age group in which these women were coming to the hospitals for treatment uh, was also more the productive age. You know, so women beyond, say, 55 or 60, uh, we found that in the patient database, we didn't have too many patients in, in that category. And that led us to question. Uh, whether everyone who uh, needed treatment was coming to the hospitals. So um, uh, for me, that was a, a great takeaway because uh, believe it or not, cancer is today the leading uh, disease um, which is affecting uh, productive age group population in our state, uh, followed by cardiovascular disease and um, uh, thereafter there's uh, kidney related problems. So cancer being the dominant uh, uh, sort of um, communicable disease that is affecting our people, women seem to be shy of not only coming forward for treatment after a certain age, and those who were coming, maybe because they had young children and they had more family responsibilities, so the, they were coming forward for treatment, seem to drop out, uh, maybe due to the high cost of the treatment, uh, or simply maybe because they felt that um, it was not worth it. Um, you know, um, sort of spending that much time and effort in getting treat treated. So these these were some of the key findings. I think uh, these were uh, again uh, very very vital issues which you brought. And with this study, I mean, there is an objectivity to the you know thought process that yes, uh, you know, and in the same line, I would like to add here that uh, you know we have conducted uh, a, a big survey in to know the climate uh, of. Uh, gender climate of Indian oncology and we found so uh, we have sent this uh, survey questionnaire to all of our oncologists and majority of the respondents were women oncologists but uh, some uh, you know some male colleagues also responded and we have done this quantitative uh, survey so that they could tick mark the questions also we did a uh, deep uh, interviewing uh, in uh, almost 10 percent of the people and we found uh, you know some alarming findings in India that uh, you know, even in the women predominant teams, also if there are male, male colleagues who are in minority, then also they got the managerial roles or the leader roles rather than the women. Uh, and there were many reasons which were, uh, you know, come uh, come from our women colleagues and even from male colleagues. One of the important, uh, you know, reason given was that the male, they were considered as natural leaders, while the women, they are considered uh, homemakers, natural homemakers. So why mm -hmm. versa to accept that there is a conscious bias as well as there is a subconscious bias. And not only this survey findings are in India, but a similar kind of survey which was conducted in Europe by European Society of Medical Oncology. Uh, you know, I'm fortunate to be the part of Women for Oncology Wing uh, for that international society as well. And uh, there also we found that uh, the similar kind of uh, gender gap which is prevalent and similar kind of uh, you know stereotyping, mm. uh, you know uh, the men they are considered right from the beginning. A child started feeling that uh, you know these are the certain roles which uh, a man will play better, while the other roles they are uh, for a woman. So I would like to hear Miss Shetty from you. Uh, you know you have you must have worked in the field and uh, and seen a different perspective. 
what is your opinion on this typical stereotyping which is kind of a barrier for women while they try to uh, you know step up the ladder uh so firstly good evening everyone and thank you for having me on the panel um i'm a science journalist i write about health uh, climate change and the intersection of health and climate and uh, um also how they affect women and i'm currently working for the fuller project which is a global newsroom that um uh, covers women um so i've spent a lot of uh, the early part of my career i was based in M mumbai and i used to come to tata often because i used to uh, be a health reporter for dna this was about 5 years back so i'm uh, going to talk a little bit about the ways in which reporting intersects with coverage of uh, the medical fraternity of course i'm not all of you are already experts on cancer so that's not something i'm going to touch on but i'm going to talk about like generally what are my takeaways uh, from covering science so in general women often tend to be invisibilized now that's that's whether for stem or otherwise um and as as journalists we have been uh, trying to include more women voices in our stories um and my personal experience uh, uh, and this is something that i've been consciously looking at since 2018 when i i made a conscious effort to include more women voices in my story so if i'm i'm speaking to five people i'll make sure that at least two or three of them are women um and so here are the the kind of issues that i run into one is a structural issue so often it happens that um uh, the if the department head is a male uh, i'm not given access to women i want to speak with i'm denied a uh, interview request uh, for instance um if i want to like speak even sometimes if if it's a study and the uh, woman is a primary author of the study but if suppose she is a phd student and uh, a co-author is is her mentor um uh, she's denied permission to speak with me um and if i try to intervene uh, it makes matters worse for women and i don't necessarily speak just for medical science i'm also i cover climate science a lot so this is across stem um and so that really gets in the way of uh, quoting more women in media that's one second often times i find women themselves say you know what i'm not the best person to to quote why don't you talk to this sir of mine or you know this other colleague of mine and women will recommend other male uh, um, uh, sources then um when i talk to men and if i ask them you know i'm working on this story could you recommend other experts in the field that i could speak with their first reaction is to recommend three other men their first reaction is to not recommend other women right so now what you have is women are recommending men men are recommending them men no one's recommending women mm -hmm. right so um that's a simple solution as women we need to have solidarity with each other uh we have to include more men in the conversation and this is something that has come up uh, earlier as well and that i mean our our feminism now has progressed to we we are not the first generation of working women uh, i've grown up with a working mother and so my uh, um issues at workplace tend to be very different from what the first generation uh first generations issues were in terms of uh, uh issues at the workplace and so i think our feminism now needs to go forward to include more male voices um apart from that um in terms of you know when i cover reproductive health or let's say uh, cervical cancer something that was spoken of we don't talk about and i could get the science wrong here but I, as as much as i understand a lot of cervical cancer ca cases are also because of bad male hygiene correct me if i'm wrong and we don't include men in the conversation at all why is everything a women's issue it's not a women's issue if the source is the male so also include men in the conversation right um same happens when when you're talking about reproductive health everything like uh family planning is a woman's issue it's not you know vasectomy is a simple procedure why don't we promote more of that uh because in rural areas when you uh when you're promoting tubectomy and uh, there's no health care once the operation's done the women are suffering the consequences throughout their lifetime um and so why are we pushing for such solutions at the policy level um and some of these solutions are very simple whenever we have a panel discussion just have a gender balance and that and i actually am opposed to just having all women on on the panel i think we should have men on the panel we should engage them in conversations we should include gender minorities apart from women and men 
because uh, we can't just invisibilize communities um, when we're talking about gender. So that's something. Those are very simple solutions that can that we can do at at, at small small levels. And we'll I think we see transformative changes because since the time that I have started paying very close attention to sourcing of my stories. I realized that there are just so many more perspectives. Solutions seem to be more diverse, and these are very easily doable things. Um, yeah, so that's that's my broad takeaways about this. So I think oh, uh, very well said. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, just one last ahead. point. Sure. One thing I really notice as a science journalist is the lack of data on women. So when I'm looking at research, uh, for instance, air pollution uh, and women's health, and that's something I keep writing about. I see very little evidence of public health impacts on women. Um, climate change and women, very little evidence. Climate change, women cast almost nothing or frankly nothing. Um, so even within women, we only see um, savarnas uh, and we don't see marginalized communities. And I'm frankly quite sure if we do a caste breakdown of everybody's there on this webinar right now, I'm not sure if we'd have women from marginalized communities. And that I would see as, um, as a huge failure of um, us also, right? Because we tend to not see everyone. Um, and so those are things that we can like uh, uh, guard against in, in our day-to-day -day lives. So I think you have made some brilliant points and uh, definitely, uh, you know, we have to be versatile and we have to be inclusive. So so on a positive note, I would like to say that we really do not want to exclude men from this panel, but uh, there are, you know, really leaders, the stakeholders in the field who are, who are uh, happen to be a woman and uh, that's how I included. And there are many, many men in the in this conference who are hearing us out. So voicing our, their voices are definitely reaching to them. Uh, so there are few women who are exclusively in this panel, rest assured. So uh, also I would like to, uh, uh, you know, ask this question to our uh, other panelist, Ritu. So, uh, so Dr. Ritu is uh, part of the Women for Oncology uh, Forum, which is uh, within our society, as I said. So Dr. Ritu, we have done this survey, uh, which I said just before, and also our recent survey Ooh. from ESMO has also shown that with the pandemic, as uh, Ms. Goel just mentioned, there is an Indian survey which shown the gender gap is widened. Uh, from ESMO also, I was part of this survey and it has clearly shown that with pandemic, the gender gap is widening. And uh, you were talking about, uh, Ms. Shetty, you were talking about the conference participation, the recommendation for women, and uh, the bias which women themselves carries and the men also carries. So this is a two-way, you know, insult towards, uh, you know, the gender and that's how the progress become uh, halted. So this is even more into, uh, you know, this pandemic. And we uh, we had a conversation with the ESMO president, uh, Dr. Solange Peters, uh, who was part of our Women for Oncology panel in last uh, ISMPCON meeting. And she said, uh, we are having a risk of getting disappeared from all these lead roles. So we really need to handhold. Uh, the fellow women colleagues should be handholding and in all the sectors. Otherwise, um, you know, this subconscious and, uh, and conscious biases perhaps would do more damaging. So Dr. Ritu, your thoughts, you know, you are a private practitioner, you are, you are a lead practitioner in Mumbai. So what kind of uh, resistance you face uh, as a woman leader in the uh, field uh, and, uh, you know, some other, uh, interactions. Uh, Dr. Ritu, I think, uh, are you mute? Yeah, thank you, Jyoti. And uh, thank you for inviting me. And it has been wonderful listening to all the perspective. And I seem to agree with everybody, including Rina, madam. She's, you know, she's a torchbearer. So she taught us the relay race and ma'am, we will never let you down. And I agree with uh, uh, Dr. Gauravi's, uh, you know, in fact, I was just uh, trying to connect the dots that there is so much of similarity she's facing as a community because I'll just share, if, I, if you permit me, I'll just share a small story. Uh, in our housing society where we stay, we have a huge complex. So we few women friends, you know, we, used to, we wanted to do a health checkup for all our domestic helps uh, two, three years back. And to a surprise, like 
you know, they were so reluctant and all the employees, like our friends said, we will pay for the checkups. It was a nominal. We got a gynec person, pap smear, dental checkup, everything, you know, in one board and everything was done free. But the reluctance which was there that if something comes up, then, you know, we our didi log humko kaam se nikal denge or, you know, somebody come, something comes up. Who will look after the family? So even within our society, these domestic help have been, they have been with us, you know, and they are quite uh, aware, but there's so much of reluctance was there on that front. So I could relate to uh, Dr. Gauravi's, uh, you know, experience, like, you know, it was, and, and fortunately we picked two of the women, a uh, domestic help who were early cervical cancer, like if we had done in a society and there was so much of fear, you know, that you will kick us out or my madam will not give me a job. We got her operated, everything went off well. So that was my small experience, which we as a women, you know, in our uh, housing society did. And I'll agree with Disha also. Disha, it's, it's, you know, I think it all begins at home. So it's all the conditioning, like as she said that, Women said, uh, okay, if, she, if you recommend somebody's name, she will recommend to a male colleague. And so I think it's a conditioning, it's us, our upbringing that, you know, we always are, fortunately, as Dr. Rina Madam said, that we are the privileged lot. And we never faced this, you know, gender discrimination as we grew up in the household. So we have all the more responsibilities, you know, to help and uh, our other women colleagues. But I feel it begins from home with the gender discrimination or that, you know, we are made to feel, no, no, we are that, you know, always a male will lead us, even at in the house, whether it is in the house or in the, in the even in the society, so many times, you know, my husband is a radiologist, but so many people will ask his opinion, even in oncology cases, then he will say, mujhe to sare pich. I have a city, I a photo of a doctor, my wife is out. So, you know, these are very subtle things, but it reflects the society, the attitude of the society towards a female doctor, towards a female doctor. So I think it's the problem is at multiple level. And as we said that, I agree with Disha that uh, we are not that feminist, feminist generation, you know, where things are changing. We have, and we were fortunate enough in Tata that we have, we had very open-minded mentors. And believe me, then we had male mentors and we had Dr. Rina Nair, madam. And we always try to help the women. And the one disturbing thing I'm noticing in the pandemic, in the Twitter, if you see, though they, especially in the West, if you see there are so many lady doctors who are quitting their jobs. If they are in high positions, they're leaving academia, they're joining the industry or they're just quitting. So this is a very disheartening trend, which the pandemic has exposed. And Jyoti, I, I, I saw that ESMO, you know, so, so you see, it's the, the, the problem is global. It's not just limited to Asian countries or it is India specific. It is, it is even in the European societies, there is. So I think we need to have, hold each other and uh, it has to be, it is to start from the home conditioning that nobody's, uh, the girl is not inferior on. And we have, just because, you know, we are, uh, Biologically, we are not as strong as them, but definitely we are no less than that. So that it begins from home and it gets reflected on the society. So I think, uh, you know, very valid points again. And I, I would say the biology is different. So some things are, uh, you know, uh, some some positives are at this side of the gender. Some positives are at that type, uh, that side of the gender. And uh, it is the perception, you know, apples and oranges cannot be compared. So, uh, you know, few things which if we are made different, uh, by the nature, we are different. And uh, there is proofs, uh, there are scientific proofs that for a similar kind of situation, even uh, if the skill set is similar, the similar kind of education, the women and the men, they react to a particular situation differently because their biology is different, their hormones are different, everything else is different. So one has to take any uh, conclusion or any interpretation in that perspective. Uh, you know, right from the childhood, Ritu brought up important point that, uh, you know, it just starts with home. So in a, I, I would just take 30 seconds to explain one, uh, maybe many of uh, you must have uh, come across also that uh, uh, video, which is which was viral some time ago, that when uh, children who were at the age of six to seven years in their kindergartens, and they were, uh, they were asked, they were sure, they were given the names that firefighter, uh, you know, uh, doctor, uh, an intensivist, then uh, some other jobs like homemaker, teacher, and they ask that whom you are imagining. 
you just write down the gender and uh, 90 percent of those kids they take when it is a firefighter a man when there is a intense with a man when there is a doctor a man when there is a uh, you know a cook or homemaker it is a woman and a teacher it's a woman so that stereotyping comes into their uh, subconscious mind very early age and when actually the and then it was kind of a play wherein the actual real world people were there and it was just opposite so the chef was a man and the firefighter was a woman the surgeon was a woman etc so this has uh, this experiment has shown that how their mind get tuned very early so now i'll move to dr indu bansal your thoughts uh, you know again as a lead, when, when a woman uh, tries to you know step up the level i will give the figure that uh, you know in medical school the ratio of women who get uh, their seats are 60 to 40 60% actually they are women and 40% uh, are the uh, you know male colleagues if you see in undergraduation level the mbbs level while when it comes to mdms level uh, it uh, drastically goes down and at super specialization level dm mch you hardly see people i remember still when i joined uh, all india institute of medical sciences for dm my dm course uh, among the uh, you know so oncology there were two seats but there were two two seats or three four seats for different specialties and among the whole those 50 plus seats uh, there were only two women so we were only the two colleagues we were like odd, odd people <laughs> So now the things have been still changed much uh, is 10 years plus and there are many more seats also. The uh, trend is also changing the perception. But still, you know, as uh, they from the undergrad level to becoming full professors or leaders or, uh, you know, group leaders, you know, administration specifically, you know, when there is a director's position or those authoritative positions, women are undermined. What is your uh, perception towards that and why it is so? Thank you so much. First of all, I want to thank uh, Biocon and uh, the organizers of this meeting for having me here. And it's a real privilege to listen to all the eminent speakers who are doing phenomenal job in their fields. And a little correction here, I'm a radiation oncologist director at Narayana Hospital Gurugram. I'm not in Artemis Hospital. So just a little correction. Uh, so I think all of you have raised a very, very important point. And as you said that uh, I would call it a le leaking pipeline phenomena, you know, that uh, people, as you said, that uh, when they enter MBBS level, then there are many females, but as you go up the ladder and then the females who actually reach the leadership positions or becoming CEOs or directors, and it's really a very, very few, few women who reach that level. And I think there are two reasons for it. There are, one is, uh, there are issues at the personal level. There are some intrinsic factors as well as there are extrinsic factors. So intrinsic factors would be women oriented, like in the sense that they have to raise their family, there are childbearing issues and maternity issues, and uh, they can't, uh, they t uh, even if uh, they want to take a job at a better place or they want to fellowships, they want to go for fellowships, and the, then the first issue comes up is who will look after my family? How will my children be looked after? So even if they are in a very, very strenuous job, it's at the responsibility of the female to educate their children, to take care of their homework being done, to looking after the laundry and everything. So they don't, they, even if they want to, they are not able to leave their jobs and go to a faraway center uh, for the jobs which men are able to do. And then there are some workplace issues. There is, at some places, there is male chauvinism and some sexual harassment issues also. Or uh, women who are at higher positions they may not get the same salary as women of the same uh, women who might be more competent, but they may not get the same salary. So I think it's a problem of women also that we are not taught to sit at the table to demand what we need. So uh, if there is any issue, a male person will go to HR or talk to the management and raise their voice while we will just keep on sitting down there and uh, and absorb all that insult and not raise our voices so i think we have to learn to stand for ourselves we have to it's our responsibility to break that glass ceiling hold each other's hand take women across and recommend them for higher positions okay so this is our responsibility like if any women goes uh, for maternity leave then them joining back is is an issue while a male would join the job the next day. So I think the, the females are less credited 
for their achievements they are less nominated for leadership uh, leadership positions and they are less viewed as a leader so even if you are a leader your point of view might not be listened as compared to a junior person who is a male colleague his issues might be given more importance or more value so we have to learn to speak for ourselves we have to learn to support each other and we i would say that females are more uh, i would say they put in more efforts at the workplace to prove that they are better they they will be they'll work more on uh, self confidence they will do uh, more self motivation or and, and they won't get as many mentors as um, some women are lucky to have good mentors but women don't get the same opportunities and the networking issue is there we are not so much open to networking as compared to males there would be so less females going to the conferences or staying for dinners or giving presentations or preparing or preparing uh, somebody raised an issue of publications if you see that there would be more publications from the male counterparts as compared to uh, females putting across their issues and there there are issues of flexible work timings also so and uh, even if the patients when they come to you so a men with gray hair their opinion would be valued more than a female who might be uh, more experienced so uh, and all of us are not uh, you know open enough to have gray hair as compared to young males who would put on beards and have gray hair and they'll put on ties and work places so i think uh, at times honestly uh, even uh, now i would be around close to 23 years post md experience but sometimes in my conversations i have to tell a patient that i have this much experience you know so sometimes just because you are a female and you don't look that old your opinion may not be taken as seriously so but when i open up my mouth when i voice my opinion when i give them an opinion then they understand that yes she is something whose opinion has to be listened to and when i go and raise issues for my junior colleagues or say that she she had a matter she went on maternity leave now she should be taken back then i have to raise an issue and say that uh, see please listen to it that she deserves to be taken back so i think as women leaders we have to uh, hand hold each other and someone pointed out i think disha said that that uh, disha and i think ritu also said that that we have to educate our boys at home we have to we, as mothers as females it's our responsibility to educate our men in the house or in the family to tell them how to treat a female we have to tell them that working in the house is their responsibility also they also have to do the laundry they also might have to help in the kitchen so we have to groom our children our friends our our sons and tell them that you are not going to uh, harass any female or you have to respect a female so that should also come from us and we it's not just male responsibility so we right. we have to be gender neutral and uh, incorporate them in uh, in all these issues right so yeah. i think again very important points you also made and uh, uh, you know uh, this is very well said that you know uh, ultimately there is a type there is a problem of stereotyping again you know some things are expected from you some things from them so there there this comes this gap and uh, we need to really work on those kind of perception from very beginning and it's it's every everybody's responsibility and also you know uh, one important point which we uh, which we uh, you know come across during our survey where there is an objectivity uh, while from indian survey as well as the international one that uh, you know there is a problem of support so the women colleagues they do not support a woman i have uh, I, I, you know i'm sad to say this that the women they face uh, hindrance from men as well as women so there comes a, a problem the woman who has uh, who herself has suffered that uh, during her maternity time there was a problem in, as you rightly said uh, of coming back or doing certain things when she is bit senior and in a position she would be hesitant to take a call so that thing we need to really overcome we have to come forward and really handle so one thing you know uh, by becoming gender neutral you know while we were taking a deep interviewing a few uh, colleagues 10% of our uh, you know survey participants some people some male colleagues they said that uh, women they are times 
they want to be equal and uh, when there is uh, some privilege they want to on that side or the side so the, if you want if you want a gender neutral environment it has to be absolutely equal but one uh, woman participant has given a very good response to that is that uh, you know um, uh, if there is a large gap which has been created over the decades and perhaps centuries to come to that level we need to support that that segment and when it really come to a level then we will talk about that yes everything should be uh, you know kind of equal so right now we have to understand that there is a big gap which is existing whether we want to see it or not uh, there is elephant in the room whether you want to recognize it or not and on few occasions few percentage of us who were uh, you know fortunate in certain occasions not all uh, they have uh, perhaps supported by uh, some progressive people uh, but this is not the situation all over the general situation is uh, not that uh, you know supportive so i think a lot lot and lot work has to be done and it has it it is uh, starting from home it's starting from an institute a uh, school level college level every level we need to remove not only the conscious bias but the subconscious bias also that women can be equally good leaders and uh, which has been shown so uh, the world is moving the lot has been done but a lot has to be done as well so i think um, at every level and uh, i would like to uh, do we uh, mrs sonic you are in authority and uh, uh, at a policy level what do you think uh, such some decisions which could make a difference what is your opinion on that how could we make a real difference of with objectivity uh, first of all let me say that i really enjoyed listening to the various speakers sharing their experiences and i can assure you that it is not very different uh, from uh, what we face in in the services uh, to begin with let me also say that um, you know if you look at the um, board results you will find more number of girls are scoring um, um, very high marks uh, as compared to boys the other thing you i have noticed in my career is that in the ies also or in, i should say all the all india services women are often in the first 10 ranks if they are not the topper they are at least in the first 10 ranks even in some batches there have been toppers but if you look 20 years down the line it will be hard for you to find them you know uh, whether it's the students you will find that they will go for courses like ma english probably get married to some big family and that's it and in the ias also or in other all india services you will find that these women are somewhere in the in the background you know not necessarily playing key roles and um, often uh, i find i'm the only woman at the table and i have to make myself heard it's not like anybody turns around to me and says yes mrs soni what would you like to say about this so drawing from these experiences what i would like to say is first of all uh, i appreciate what dr indu mentioned you need to lift each other up you know if there's another woman sitting with you no matter you know who she is or what background she has or how senior or junior it is i think that doesn't matter you should always consciously support that woman you know and that's how you build a kind of a coalition uh, so you uh, and you sort of support each other's point of view that's very very important the other thing is that um, try and not have any biases you know we women also tend to be very biased in our approaches often we will be critical of others uh, we will say oh yes she is a wonderful officer but you know this but ruins everything so be honest be supportive uh, try not to have biases and work towards creating a coalition this is more i would say for the urban educated women for women in general i think it's important that the value system that you're giving them right from the beginning the kind of opportunities you're providing them the kind of nutrition you are providing them so that they, they can achieve their full potential and uh, opportunities all in different stages of life i mean there there should be always i feel um you know place kept for women uh, no matter um, uh, you know which organization you are talking about and i am not necessarily correlating it with reservation but you should have earmarked spaces for women where you should say no this many members in this organization will be women and um, i have also been surprised to notice on many occasion when we've gone actively looking for women we haven't found any we haven't found any why because believe it or not there is a glass ceiling for you you know there is a particular level beyond which 
you don't have the support because what you mentioned earlier dr jyoti about you know that bias and unconscious uh, sort of subconscious and unconscious kind of a bias um, beyond a certain level women are not encouraged because they are looked as as a second income in the family not necessarily somebody who's achieved that on her own merit and always preference is given to the male because he's the breadwinner he has to look after not only the family but the extended family that a woman could also be looking after an extended family is often neglected you know so what policies can help let me tell you that in india we have almost 85 percent of the regulations that any country should have you know defining different kind of enabling provisions in the law but they are not enforced they are not implemented they are on paper and india is perhaps the only country also in the world where the gender gap is so disparate you know there is not a single um, uh, sector in which women outnumber men it's almost all sectors men outnumber women so there's a lot of ground to be covered as far as policies are concerned there's no lack there's no dearth it's in the implementation it's in the you know provisioning that that we still have a long way to go i think you really summarized well so i will ask 30 30 seconds to each panelist to give a last take home message miss goel to you you are mute i think but i'd like to just say that we should progress to a society wherein we do not really need the backing and the validation of men to be able to have a role or identity very recently i accompanied gauravi on one of the community visits and in a psc we found that on the casualties uh, in the casualty wing that some of the casualty they deal are suicides and there are more women uh, you know uh, who who are uh, you know who are committing suicide than men and essentially it is because of either they have uh, the men have taken more than one wife they are not being able to bear children so and also when we brought out this issue about mental health and having some group counseling session for these these women um, we were told by the by the in charge there that in in one or two cases when they did have this the women the men actually dragged the women away from those camps so that they would not attend them so i think that you know we are uh, you know we are urban and we are you know battling with other things but there are other places of society as disha pointed out the marginalized ones wherein we as women who are in some some you know some role some kind of a leadership should be able to you know further empower women i think that is one of the most important things and my take away message from this i think very 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 important yes we together perhaps we can make some difference and we should make the difference gauravi to you uh i think we need to uh, prioritize ourselves both in terms of uh, health issues and other issues also and uh, often we uh, see that when we go in the community women rather than bothering about their own health when at least when they are not well they would think about you know how will my daughter get married if people come to know that i have suffered from breast cancer or how will i face the community please don't stand at the doorstep my neighbor will know about it and then you know how do i face the community how do i face the society so uh, rather than thinking about all these issues if she would prioritize her own health i think and uh, prioritize her own life for that matter that would be uh, be good for everyone including herself and the family very well said i think she needs to think that she can prioritize her uh, her you know things uh, you know including her life as you rightly said uh, dr nair your take home ma'am you're oh. mute i guess so i think uh, everybody has said so many things and so well that uh, i have again learned a lot from this particular panel uh, i also feel you know kind of proud when i uh, see so many of my women colleague who have made it big and i think if i have so many and these so many have so many more to contribute to the society like everybody said women can help women most i don't think anybody can help us more than each other and so if this thing percolates into the society nothing like it i think it is for us again like someone said that you know please teach your sons how to be good how to behave and what they should do i will add please teach your daughters that they have to fight for everything 
don't make them you know think that uh, life will go on easily for them Uh, let them come out let them want what they want and make sure that they get what they want so both the sons have to be taught definitely but your daughters also have to be made to stand in the society for themselves uh, and of course like you know everybody says that uh, the uh, we have lots of problems i am really happy that sujatha and jyoti have started putting numbers to this problem because normally we discuss you know this is a problem that is a problem and then we go home and we sleep over it here there are two people who are actually putting data audits and bringing the problem to an objectivity i think all of us need to take something learn something from both these ladies and make sure that in whatever area we are doing we objectify the problems the gap and then i'm sure there will be more people who will listen to us men and women and who will actually help us bridge this gap so a very good beginning has been made in at least in the field of oncology with jyoti setting up i'm sure many other people can take this forward in their own field and if we work together as women nothing will stop us so thank you very much for this uh, you know wise uh, wisdom of pearls i would say uh, disha to you your take home a quick uh, bite yes Uh, i'll keep it short so i i would uh, urge any one of us in any kind of positions of power uh, can we make it easier for women to speak up or reduce the costs they face when they speak up right because women don't speak up when because there's a cost so even if we don't agree with the opinion in our own small ways can we go one extra mile into helping somebody else speak up and protect them from the cost that i think would really help thanks i i think this is this is really needed and women in powerful positions when they reach uh, to that extent uh, they they are having a responsibility towards your own gender that they should try to really hold hand and bring those women to the stage uh, ritu your your take home and then indu i think yes uh, i'll start again from the home as rina madam said and i tease all my friends who have two do- two sons that you know i have two daughters and you know our daughters are outshining so please uh, so it begins from home there the gender desensitization defining we don't have to define roles that this is for the males and that is for the females and most important thing that we have as madam said we have to stand for ourselves and as indu said that uh, Uh, we have to help each other in even if you know we are biased towards it's okay but we don't have to forget that you know ultimately we all are we all are struggling and we all have our challenges so it's always good to have you know a mica within the hospital and fortunately we we created that and it helps and i think uh, disha and uh, sujata yeah just uh, i i learned a lot from them and gauravi i was just add i have two daughters i have three maids and mother in law and me and one husband so we all tease him that it takes seven women to look after a man so on that note i think we really jyoti i enjoyed the discussion and and i learned a lot and but this is not it, it is a beginning and as rina madam said we have to take it forward and thanks for bringing out such a nice forum and i really learned a lot yeah we have to take this forward to uh, next level this is beginning and i really i am trying to establish a formal mentorship program uh, you know within country and even beyond uh, you know to help many uh, women colleagues from uh, you know india and uh, sar countries and even uh, beyond that so i would need require help from all of you and uh, uh, so my son is peeping out this is uh, showing a working mother's distress <laughs> okay babe no i'm not going right So now, Doctor Hindu, your last bit, and we will finish the panel. Uh, so first of all, I would say that I am feeling so enriched and empowered listening to all of you uh, women, and it has been really a great learning for me. So my take homes would be that as a female, first of all and foremost important thing is that we have to learn to love ourselves first. Then, uh, because if we don't love ourselves, then nobody will love us uh, any other way. 
we have to respect ourselves our body take care of our physical health mental health and then because of one healthy female if a female is healthy then the home place works smoothly we have to learn to sit at the table uh, make us voices heard and i think one more important which thing which nobody touched here is that we have to work on our emotional quotient also because that is one thing which puts us down which keeps us away from putting our voices being heard and someone said there is a cost to it so we have to learn to be empathetic but firm at the same time and put our points across and we have to learn to speak for ourselves we have to learn to pat ourselves on the back when we really achieve something which boys do but we are very shy of claiming our uh, something that we achieve so we have to learn to buy our own tiara and learn to put it on our crowns because we, if we keep on waiting for some that someone will come and give us a tiara and then we will put it then we will never get it because it's a it's a jungle ladder where we have to really there would be many people who would be pulling you down but if, if we have reached at this position it's difficult to retain this position and we have to not just retain this position but bring many women down the ladder and bring up bring them up at this uh, position so we have to learn to keep jealousy away understand that because that is one factor which which keeps us separate and which uh, that's why males they encourage males but as females we don't encourage females so we have to learn to respect each other's viewpoint uh, and separate it from a gender viewpoint okay so we have to just support a cause support something which is good irrespective of the gender who is giving uh, that opinion so with this i would say that first we have to learn to love ourselves respect our gender accept us the way we are that's the only way to proceed further and we represent 50% of the population but we have to uh, compete against that 50% but we we i don't think and we have to learn to not just have work life balance but how to integrate we have to learn to work life integration is more important and most of us who have reached this position are doing that and we must uh, thank uh, we uh, all of us who are talking here i think we are here because there was someone in the family some uh, your husband we were our husbands or our fathers who helped us reach this position so we have to respect that also that's what i would say so absolutely you know i think rather than uh, a particular gender it's uh, the person who all helped uh, you know us in reaching to certain level uh, they we should be thankful and grateful to them also one another thing i wish uh, to say that uh, many times even if a husband or father or brother who is doing an equal thing We we extra rate and they themselves also feel this is something extra which is rather just equal. We need to realize that also that perhaps this is just uh, as what we are also doing. So uh, you know bring yourself into same level and think that way uh, rather than uh, you know uh, as somebody saying that we always uh, have a subconscious feeling of thinking that they are little beyond higher or something. So that uh, subconscious bias we needs to be go out from the as a society as well as from our individual levels uh, I, i think everybody makes brilliant points i think we need to learn that uh, you know whenever a little girl uh, you know she is trying to prove herself or trying to make some points rather than saying that she is bossy we should say she is having incredible skills to uh, you know lead the show uh, so that kind of uh, feeling should grow from the beginning and that can take us uh, forward we need to hold and teach each other and bring and bring more women who can rise the ladder with this note i would like to thanks again i hand over the mic to dr neera to give this opportunity for an excellent uh, discussion thank you all thank you so much dr jyoti i must congratulate you because it was your initiative it was your brain child and it was so interesting after seeing dr meher dr somani i'm seeing it everybody is glued to the discussion and we all thoroughly enjoyed so nice of you for bringing this discussion up in this forum and before i invite kalpana pai from our side i would uh, invite dr sabeta for last few words and then i'll invite kalpana certainly certainly wonderful and thought provoking panel discussion my compliments to all of them and there is no denying the fact that we want to see human flourishing we must bridge the gender gap we must support each other and we must invest in women's health that's from my side
Thank Thanks you, a lot. Uh, Sabita ma'am. And now, uh, finally, everything has to come to an end. But this is a new beginning. And I would invite Kalpana Pai. She is Associate Vice President and Head of Commercial Excellence at Biocon Biologics. And she will be casting a word of thanks for such wonderful discussion and sessions. Kalpana, over to you.